first time caffeinated folks today? And then how many like lifers? Right on, cool, cool, cool. Even some of our past guests, so thank you everyone for showing up. Um, I'm Jay Farrakane. I'm a graphic designer. I live here in Boulder. Um, I run a small studio called Angry Bovine. Um, and Caffeinated Mornings was um, basically an idea that we had. Um, there was a lot of meetups and things like that in town for designers and creative people to learn how to do things like drop shadows and stuff like that. You should know how to do that, and if you don't, there's lots of places to learn about that. But I wanted a place to be inspired and um, connect with um, other creatives around um, the awesome things we do every day. So Caffeinated Mornings was a, um, an attempt at that. So um, three years later, here we are in a new great space and um, with better and better guests every day. So um, I'm always amazed that people want to do this with me. So um, thank you very much for everyone coming. Today's guest is Thomas Woodson. Um, he's an adventure filmmaker living right here in Boulder. Uh, when I first met, Tom, met Thomas, um, he and then his partner, uh, Matt Null, were in this empty room um, in a rented like creative space up in uh, up, uh, up off Pearl. Western um, Plaza, that's where everybody starts. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, like that's where everybody starts. It seems like. <laughs> and um, it was funny because they were in this like tiny room sitting on the floor and they couldn't have been more proud of that place. And the funny thing was, is in, in reflection on that, in that empty room, you know, you had these two guys that were ready to kind of tackle anything that came their way. And the tools that they had or the skills that they needed to do whatever came their way, they had already. The room was kind of being empty was kind of indicative of where Thomas has and entered now in his career, um, which is really interesting. Because um, he had this basic skill set, he's just kind of shifted his tools around a little bit. And so um, today, um, we're going to kind of get to, um, today Thomas basically was built as a designer and um, developer, and now he spends his time chasing athletes around the world and helping brands tell better stories um, through adventure. Um, so this is part of the story or the show where I usually turn it over to the guest and he starts running through um, his kind of thinking and the stories behind the work that he does. Um, but today we're lucky to have a special sneak preview of one of Thomas's latest projects. Um, it's called 55 Hours in Mexico. It's a short nine minute film um, that proves epic adventures can kind of really fit into any space that you make for it. So um, let's jump in. fly from Denver to Veracruz, rent a car, drive from sea level up to 14,000 feet, then we'd stay in this hut, wake up early in the morning, climb the volcano, ski off the summit, head back to the airport, and then fly right back to work for Monday. We had one shot at climbing this thing. If we got altitude sickness in the night, we're done. A weekend trek down to climb an 18,000 foot peak is not, is a little ill-advised, I would say. It's not really something that I would recommend. <laughs> so no car so, insurance? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at now, and I think a year ago, or a little less than a year ago, I was a full-time graphic designer working nine to five, wondering how in the world can I just go play outside for a living. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so as a, as a graphic designer, I moved out to Colorado um, probably three years ago. I was working for an agency in Denver. Thought, oh, this is sweet, and then like eight months later, they lost a big client, and I got fired from like my first job. And uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm never gonna have a boss again. So I started uh, started contracting, and then um, met my friend Matt, and we're like, all right, well, maybe we should work together. And then that uh, that kind of led to this, the empty office thing. When we met Jay, and um, by kind of partnering with a developer, it kind of unleashed a lot of potential in me. And I'd never worked side by side with a developer before, and it just taught me a lot about kind of the, like how fast you can create things and 
how design can influence development and development can influence design. And um, we ended up giving a caffeinated mornings talk on that. What is this? Uh, 2013. So yeah, two, two years ago, we kind of gave a talk on that as our little studio is growing. Um, and then uh, we were in the Westin Plaza where kind of everybody starts their companies these days, it seems, um, before, uh, before Galvanize kind of bought out all the space. Um, and then next door to us was, uh, was John Weiss, and we kind of partnered together and started this thing called Human Design. And uh, we were also in a just tiny little shack office there. Um, and I kind of grew and grew. This is now a hat store on Pearl Street, I think, is like our temporary space. Um, and I kept cruising along um, till, uh, till this crazy project kind of hit in my life. Uh, we'd, I think we hit kind of a, a slow month, um, kind of during the early stages of human design. And my buddy uh, Joey Schusler was like, hey, so I've been planning this trip to Peru. We're going to try to bike pack around the Cordillera Wiwash. And um, one of the main peaks in that is Sula Grande, if anybody's ever seen Touching the Void or um, read about it or whatever. Um, so we're going to try to circumnavigate that. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just like take a month off of work and we'll go see what happens. And uh, I literally just thought I would kind of go on this adventure and like they'd make a film about it. And then like I'd kind of just go back to my life. Um, but I ended up being uh, pretty involved with the film and I kind of saw it as my opportunity to really pursue this stuff that I've been working on in my free time a lot. And uh, then Joey and I kind of went at the film like 50-50 and um, I learned a ton from him in the process, but he's been doing this stuff for a while for Yeti cycles and everything. Um, so we just shot this crazy film on this week long bike packing trip through these mountains. We went in the wrong season. We got rained on all the time. Uh, Joey got knocked out, got a concussion. We like drunk people pulled guns on us, like all this crazy stuff. You can, uh, you can see the film on my website. Um, and, uh, yes, yeah, so we just had this, this crazy trip. And then, uh, afterwards, we were starting to think about like, all right, how can we make this more than just some little film that we cut and put online? So I, I started to kind of tap into my kind of design skills and stuff and started thinking like, all right, well, what, how can we provide value to these brands that have paid for us to go and do this kind of thing? And we started creating um, like Instagram, um, like social takeovers for all the different brands. And then we would kind of have a strategy around using the photos that kind of highlight their products and kind of speak in the same tone and voice as they would in their normal stuff. And we kind of just deliver these packages ready to go to all our, um, all our kind of partners in this stuff. And it was all leading up to the film launch when we'd have our premiere at Five Point Film Festival, go online the next day. Well, we ended up getting, I think with maybe six brands we had to take over for, we, I think we had like 400,000 impressions over a week. Um, and then we launched the film, we got a Vimeo staff pick and got half a million views, I think in six months. And now it's done, uh, I don't know, like 20 festivals around the world and all like just crazier stuff than I ever could have imagined. Um, oh, and, and it also launched with this um, digital feature for Bike Magazine. And it was something that um, Matt and Noel and I built when we were at Human Design together. Um, and it was just kind of an interactive way to scroll through and see the story and some of our journals from the trip. Um, and then we sold sponsorships to pay for that as well. It's like, these little call outs would come up for like, oh, check out, this is the Yeti bike that we were riding, or this is the new Smith helmet that, that we were using. Um, but then after that, it was, it, was back to, it was back to normal life. All the film festival glow had worn off, and then I was like, just like sitting at my desk, and I was like, man, it's like, design didn't have the same appeal as it used to anymore. I was like, gosh, that was just insane, just traveling around in the mountains, carrying cameras and stuff. And now I'm back to doing this, and like, I guess I like it, it's pretty fun, but I'd rather, I'd rather be going and doing that kind of stuff. And kind of since I first met John Weiss and the whole like year that we were working together, he's always kind of pushing me, he's like, you know, like, I don't, I don't think you're gonna be sitting behind a computer like being a graphic designer like a year from now. Like, I, I, just, I just don't really, I don't really see that. Um, so then, then a year later, uh, I kind of decided to jump from the nest and just go for that. And uh, John and Matt were super supportive then, like, just do it, like, we know you can do this. And I was like, it's a crazy thing to kind of leave a legit job. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I left last summer and here's kind of what work looks like now, um, which uh, everybody thinks it's all like fun and games and playing, which it, it, it kind of is, but uh, so here's, yeah, kind of here's an example of work. That, that top corner, I was shooting some um, brand videos for outdoor research 
Um, my partner who's supposed to be a model in the shoot forgot the tent body and we got hit with like a one foot storm overnight in the Indian Peaks camping in the Alpine. So that was kind of a shiver bivy, keep the cameras safe as we get like covered in snow all night. Um, the bottom corner is like filming Wiwash. That's after Joey just got a concussion, lacerated his face and knocked himself unconscious. And we're like watching footage to help recall his memory and like make sure that he's like, okay. Um, and then there's also like climbing couloirs, finding uh, or like following pro athletes while I'm carrying like an extra 50 pounds of gear. Like they're faster than me if I had like no gear and then I have to put on the gear and so I'll follow them all day long to shoot some kind of film. Um, the far corner, that's not totally suffering. That we spent like a week in Crested Butte just filming riding and riding bikes and looking at leaves. But for the most part, um, it really hurts and I'm kind of wondering what is gonna happen to my back like 10 years from now. Like I need to like start doing a lot more yoga because this shit is pretty hard. Um, so yeah, some of, the, some of the work that I've done in the past year of kind of going out on my own. Uh, so my buddy Joey Schusler that I partner in a lot of these films with, he is content marketing, some, something like that for Yeti. Now he kind of just has like an adventure budget and he just like goes and does whatever he wants as long as it gets attention for Yeti. Um, but we worked on this video together. Um, this is also on my, on my website. Um, we spent the kind of peak of leaf season down in Crested Butte um, just trying to show like a, a good gathering with friends, kind of the, the last glimpse of these trails you'd have before the snow comes in and, and winter takes over. And sure enough, it, it did. We shot most of the film in the first two days and then just got like stormed on um, the rest of the time. Like tried to go ride 401 and we rode in the first mile and it was dry and then it snowed three inches like in the time it took us to retreat and, and get out of there. <laughs> um, but that was a really fun project. We got a Vimeo staff pick on that as well, which is ridiculous. Um, so then in the fall, uh, the Mexico project came around and I think we heard about this mountain through like a, a talk at Neptune or something. We heard about like some crazy boulder guys just going down there in spandex and like running up this thing like super quick and it's like, wow, that'd be like a pretty sweet basis for a film. And the, the idea didn't really kind of like come to fruition until we like decided to bring our friend Carl who totally made the film but uh like wow we need somebody that just sits at a desk like all day long like if if all I mean a room full of people are probably going to go back to their desks after this like hopefully <laughs> you guys might think like whoa like what what would happen if I took next Friday off and just bought a plane ticket like somewhere insane and just like went for it and like that's what this guy did a little extreme and above his like altitude limits but uh that was uh kind of kind of the kind of the concept um but so, so to produce this, we tapped into a lot of the stuff that worked for the Wiwash uh, film and a lot of things that I'd been learning, making pitch decks and stuff for startups um, at the time, like kind of how to sell an idea, how to come up with deliverables that will um, make your investors or your sponsors happy, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and prior to this, like our film pitches had just been like kind of like some emails to brands like, hey, can you give us some gear? Like, we want to go do this film and stuff. And like, that's not really like a sustainable thing. So we like came up with a, a slightly inflated budget and uh, then hit up all these sponsors. Like, all right, do you want to come in at this level? It's this price, this level, it's this price. And like literally kind of gave them like packages that they could, they could buy in at. And depending on their contribution, we're like, all right, well, you will get five full rights images or we'll uh, create a social campaign for you that ties in with the launch of this film and all of our other media outlets and stuff as well. So like we can all benefit from this uh, collectively. And we always have like distribution strategies in there and these different media outlets and these festivals and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so with this, we bought plane tickets. Uh, we, let's see, we went the 1st of November. We bought our plane tickets in October. I think we even like put the pitch deck together in October and got funded within like two weeks just to go do this. So um, it, turned out to be not as hard as we really expected. Um, and then earlier this year, uh, I got the chance, I'd been doing a couple mountain bike videos for Smith Optics, um, and I got the call to uh, travel around the South Island of New Zealand in this RV and just like trash the thing for two weeks with their team of mountain bikers. Uh, and this was just absolutely ridiculous. So it, it, there's a, a three-part series to our, our travels around there, um, and you can find it. We, launched them all through uh, Pink Bike, the mountain bike website with kind of photo stories and stuff as well. Um, but all the episodes are on my, on my website now. So we did this all kind of crazy backcountry riding and um, a lot of really incredible stuff. 
and this was probably the peak of my um, suffering with a, a camera pack as well because Joey was technically the director of that and brought all of his kit as well and it was like oh yeah well maybe you should bring this camera body yeah why don't you throw an extra camera body and maybe another one and all, all these lenses too and it, by the end I was carrying like a 60 pound pack trying to ride a bike and then we did like a alpine like hike a bike up the scree field to get on this ridge to shoot the sunrise and then like everybody just ditched me because they're like oh the sun's about to come up and i'm like well who the fuck's gonna film this thing like, <laughs> so like i have like my bike on top of my camera pack just like trying to hike up the scree field and it's like two steps forward one step back like just a just a mess um but a, a pretty pretty incredible trip nonetheless um shortly after that i well, I, I got back and I'm like, okay, oh, I can take a break. I've, I've been in New Zealand for three weeks. Like, uh, I thought travel would be sweet, but I would kind of like to be at home for a little while as well. Um, so then I'd been working on uh, pitching this idea of a, a video series um, with DinaFit. And actually, my friend that's now the, I think, marketing director at DinaFit, he was our managing director at Human Design. And uh, when, when DinaFit poached him away to, to go over there, I was like, Yes, I finally have an in in outdoor industry. <laughs> like, this is somebody I'm going to be working for. So we started working together, and we realized that they didn't have the marketing budget to do a film series. So I went back to what I had been learning and creating my other adventure films. Like, all right, well, who can pay for it? And all their new apparel that's coming out features Gore-Tex stuff. So we just went after Gore-Tex to fund the whole thing. And we're like, all right, we'll do like a backcountry launch, and then have like shop the Gore-Tex collection below, and think about all these other like tie-ins and stuff. So we sold Gore-Tex on the whole series, and then I hit the road and drove 4,000 miles in two weeks to shoot four episodes with their pairs of athletes. And I went to Crested Butte, Squamish, British Columbia, Cook City, Montana, and Sun Valley, Idaho. Um, and kind of followed a, a pair of traveling bindings as each athlete was testing out the new bindings that were coming out and would send it from athlete to athlete. Um, but then here I was like trying to ski with a massive pack following like Eric Kjolofsson, who's in like the, um, see that, what, Afterglow, like light up ski segment that like went incredibly viral and like all the other big ski movies out there. Um, and Trevor Hunt, I mean, this guy skied in like Pakistan, Kazakhstan, like New Zealand, like goes crazy places. Um, so chasing them around the mountains uh, and Whistler. And then uh, there's some stuff in Cook City. We're pretty much skiing in Yellowstone. And these ladies are insanely fast fit as well um, more struggling chasing them around um, some recent stuff I just launched um, I I, uh, I got hooked up with Cannondale actually through uh, through Jamie Kripke he was supposed to do the shoot and he had pneumonia or something like ah, I probably shouldn't go try to ride a bike with these guys and, and shoot the stuff so um, I was kind of blown away to, to get this opportunity to shoot a, a bike launch video for this new road bike that's coming out it's got a lefty suspension fork like smaller rims and bigger tires and just this really crazy thing. Um, and they wanted to kind of bring a little more adventure into road biking videos because it's mostly like shooting out of the back of a truck and like some guy just like looking fast and like staying tough. And it's like, no, like we need to make something people like want to go watch. So we ended up like, um, I mean, there's like your kind of standard like road bike stuff. But then we went to try to ride this freshly graded dirt road and got caught in a rainstorm and ended up having like a couple mile hike a bike as the bikes are all jammed up and just like a, a I don't know this this kind of stuff I think just follows me like wherever I wherever I go <laughs> like the inside of my camera bag was fully soaked and I was just carrying this bike just walking up the road just like what am I got myself into um, also doing some stuff for matter cycles we got Colin in the back here local rad bike builder um, and this kind of came as a, a passion project as I was um, starting to transition from de design to filmmaking. I was like, what can I occupy my uh, time with and kind of work on work on something long-term and uh, just, I don't know, kind of see what I can create out of it, just like collaborating with, with Colin and all these crazy bikes that he's building. Um, so I've been shooting a lot of stuff in his, uh, in his shop about kind of his process and uh, his kind of unique approach to making these bikes that are some of the funnest bikes you could possibly ride. Uh, and then just going out and like shooting some really cool trails or around uh, up in the mountains. And then um, one of the shoots I referenced earlier, I did this stuff for outdoor research and uh, they've kind of started calling on me as like, oh no, we need winter content and it's not winter anymore, but you seem to be in the mountains a lot, so can you find it for us? <laughs> so uh, w the, first, the first day was just kind of easy, like bike to ski thing, like 
just kind of showing off these jackets, like a nice, like cheerful adventure. And then the next one was like, okay, there's a huge storm coming. We got to show this like gnarly new jacket that's coming out. Like, what can we go find? And um, that's when we just camped in a wide out in a May massive snowstorm and uh, climbed this pretty steep line and got them some wild content. And then kind of the next day I was on the phone with their creative director and he's like, yeah, I just got out, the, uh, uh, got out of a meeting with like our CEO and he's saying like, we kind of need to tone the brand down a little bit, like not be so core. And this is like right <laughs> after I delivered like footage of just like trying to climb a couloir and like sideways winds and wide out stuff. I was like, you asked me for winter and <laughs> I found it. Um, so yeah, some lessons from a 24 year old. I don't know, these are some, kind of some things that I've been figuring out during this like radical um, shift and everything. But um, I found that when you're trying to redefine yourself, it gives you a really good goal to work towards. And that's even applicable to, if, if you're a startup and you're trying to pivot and not some crazy like overnight pivot, like, oh my gosh, scrap everything, start over. But think of like, all right, we're kind of here, like, but we want to be more of this kind of company. How can you like gradually shift like just little like kind of micro interactions and stuff to gradually steer you like onto that course? So like with my film stuff, like I could have gone to Peru and then just kind of sat back and let Joey make this film and like whatever. But I started to think like, okay, but how can I think of this film like a business and how can I deliver more value to these brands and how can I make sure that people engage more with this film or this film like it's like spread more and uh, and kind of like work it towards like putting me on the trajectory to be a filmmaker. Um, so really to, to like to make a shift from like, I mean, being like a designer to filmmaker or designer to, to anything really, like it, it doesn't have to be some overnight thing where it's like, all right, I'm deleting Illustrator, I'm deleting Photoshop, <laughs> I'm like canceling like the lease in this office, I'm gonna buy a camera. It's just like, no, you gotta kind of just like keep working little things and like gradually, gradually shift it towards, uh, towards where you wanna be. Um, and working towards this change can be much easier than you might expect. Like, congratulations, we're all in Boulder. Everybody here is accessible, has all the connections you could ever need. Like, you're usually just like one connection away. And kind of how that uh, helped me is just brands and things that are, that are here and being able to meet different marketing managers or creative directors, some other outdoor companies, and then being able to kind of bounce these ideas off or they can pass you along to other companies or, or that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, like when I, when I showed up here, just like starting to kind of see what the design scene was like, I was just like kind of thinking there's this kind of like higher level of, of it all. And like, oh man, like there's this like guy, angry bovine, just like run around like with a loud it's mouth. Like, level. Yeah, like running, <laughs> run, like running the town or like, oh man, those like burger and fair dudes. And then like next thing you know, you're just like riding bikes. All people, like you're just like friends with everybody. And it's like everybody here is just like super approachable and willing to help and introduce you to people. And like, if you just start, to look at it as like kind of like a one level community and never like put yourself on this lower level like kind of looking up at people like it just makes things way better and i've even like noticed that with even meeting people that i used to like idolize now at these film festivals and people that are shooting like huge commercials and campaigns and stuff and they're like oh yeah like i've heard about your work yeah you're doing like cool stuff and, and then it's like they're just super friendly it's never like it's never like oh yeah you're just that kid that showed up and it's like shooting stuff it's like just just look at everybody as the same and then like you'll probably make a lot more connections and go a lot further if you just like think you're all equal um so tools change and focus on your craft i would say the the basis of everything i'm doing comes from my studio art degree studying color and composition fundamentals of art art history all that kind of stuff because that's the same core that i tap into no matter what I'm doing. Like my professors in college when I like studied graphic design, like they didn't ever teach us how to do anything with software. And people would like start griping about that. And it's like you got YouTube for that. Like whatever. Like I'm gonna teach you how to use like Illustrator like CS4 or what like and then that's not gonna do you any good like when they keep changing it and changing it and changing it. Um, so I now I don't really look at my tools is really even being like that different. It's just like, am I working in Photoshop today? Am I working with a camera today? It's really all about like, what am I trying to accomplish? Like what value am I trying to bring to somebody? How am I gonna do that? What does my audience look like? What does my distribution look like? Like all that kind of stuff. Um, and just kind of use whatever like tools are around you. Like I don't, people get too caught up on stuff. And even like, I don't know, you might say, oh, I only have like 
a thousand dollar camera like i can't shoot some like amazing film well like most of the good like films at all these adventure film festivals i go to are things that like happen to be shot with a gopro by some like climber dude and then he just hands all the footage off to like some amazing editor that just brings this like incredible piece out of it and it's never totally about what tools you're using it's just your ideas um and then the tricky one and one that seems to be kind of there's some differences between design and filmmaking, but but trying to trying to find a balance between humility and self promotion. Um, and one thing I found that's like when I was working for studios and stuff, if you're trying to promote yourself, it's you're kind of promoting this like third party. Like even if it's like you made this like sweet logo, it's like look at this work we did. We, you can just keep saying like kind of we and kind of like pass it off and like oh like check this out. But like as a as a filmmaker, it's pretty hard because you have to kind of create your own image that so these. Like when, when I get work, it's literally just because a brand just calls me up and it's like, hey, do you want to come on this trip and, and do this stuff? And you have to try to build up the right image so that you get those calls. And you have to be like, hey, everybody, look at, look at my film. And it's, it's something that you're more emotionally attached to versus just being like, hey, everybody, like, check out this website I did where like, people might click on it and designers be like, oh yeah, that's cool. And like, all right, that's done. But like, if I want to get you to like watch my like 10 minute film or something there, like it's completely different. I have to like try to like inflate it and hype it up and be like, all right, like watch this. I promise you'll enjoy it. And it's like a, just a, a different thing to kind of promote. And it can like totally mess with your, with your heads at times as well. But like, then you always like meet people that are like, oh man, like you're killing us. You like your, all your Instagram stuff. And it's like, part of that is just kind of like maintaining that like brand image and stuff as well. But it's uh. I, I don't really have any any guidance on that, but it's something that will probably just plague your mind for like your your entire career. But uh, as as you're like promoting things that are for kind of the general public, I think it's a lot different than when you're promoting commercial work for commercial clients and stuff that people can just appreciate on a professional level. Whereas like now I'm somehow trying to promote work that you will appreciate on a personal level, which that is uh that is kind of strange. Um, and what's next? Um, my lease ends in one month, and I am moving into this to chase around all these filmmaking jobs. <laughs> so my, uh, my girlfriend and I have been building out a RAM Pro Master that's going to serve as the basis for all of my future jobs and fully off the grid with all the solar stuff for my, my cameras and everything. And uh, I'm heading up to Jackson, Wyoming for most of August and September to um, shoot a kind of lifestyle um, campaign piece for outdoor research. And then after that, I don't really know. <laughs> it's another that's, adventure. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the fun in it all. Um, yep, headed to the Tetons. And then, so here's my website, and uh, you can check out some of the pieces that I uh, reference and put screenshots and stuff of in there. Um, and you can hit me up in any of these other ways um, if you want to go on adventures or have any ridiculous ideas for a film or anything like that. I'm, I'm always all ears about this kind of stuff. Cool, man. And, yeah, that's that. <laughs> all right, how, how about anybody out there have questions for Thomas? Yeah. You do your own editing as well. Yes. Um, I, I'm starting to realize that it's a kind of a huge time suck as well. And I, in the future, I would maybe like to work with other editors and stuff and like kind of just shoot. But it's also fun to, I don't know, you, you might end up bringing a different story out of the piece versus like when you're, when you're shooting it. As you start exploring music and, and things like that, it can completely like change the feel of, uh, of what you experience. Or you can even, if you're editing your own stuff, you might remember the feeling you had in that exact moment. And then you might be able to bring it out more than if you just pass it to somebody else. So there's kind of like, I don't know. It's context. Yeah. yeah. It, it's hard. It's, it's good to edit my own stuff. And sometimes I'm like, just somebody else just do this for me. Like, I don't know. I haven't gotten to play outside in forever. Is there one, <laughs> one side of it that you enjoy more, shooting or editing? I, I definitely, like shooting. yeah, I definitely like shooting more. Right. Yeah. Not carrying a pack, but shooting. Maybe. Yeah. So how are you laying out the van right now to be able to live and work in it? Uh, so on the van right now, I've got 300 watts of solar on the roof and a huge battery bank that should last me like four days, like if the sun stops working. Um, 
And uh, so uh, it's going to be tough. To, I'm, I'm downgrading from like editing on like a big screen to just a laptop, but I think it's worth it to, to be mobile and whatever. Um, but I'm also uh, mounting a, a small like pocket projector on the ceiling that will project on the curtains that blocks off like the front area of the van. So if I'm like sitting in the back in the bed like with my feet up, like I could be projecting like my like the actual video that I'm working on like on the on the curtains and then have all the timeline and like controls and stuff like on the laptop. So I think that that should be a pretty cool editing workflow. Um, but the, the cool thing of going from being a designer to being a filmmaker is like the, the reviews are much more stretched out. And during, I'd say 90% of the editing process, like even a, to edit a four minute video, I mean, it might take me three weeks or something. So it's a, a pretty slow thing. So up until then, I might have weekly reviews where I'll export just a small like 30 meg low res rough cut with timestamps and stuff. And I could upload that over a wireless modem and not blow through a, a data plan or something pretty easy. Or just hit a coffee shop like once a week just to upload my stuff and then like go back out in the woods and just edit it away. Um, but then when something's getting finished, that's when I'm like going to kind of have to be in civilization and kind of bouncing back like final cuts. Like, all right, sweet. I just spent all day uploading this four gig file. And then, oh man, there's a typo in like the titles. So I got to like do that all over again and upload it. Uh, Glad to see that somebody happens to somebody else. <laughs> Yeah. I'm curious if you could talk a little more about finding sponsorships and, you know, you're, you're making a movie, you may or may not know how, you know, what, what your distribution is or mm -hmm. distribution, and you have to put a value on that film in order to go to sponsor and say, hey, your sponsorship's worth X number of dollars. How do you go through that? Uh, trial and error in the sense that you just raise the price every time you do it and just kind of find <laughs> the, you kind of find the, you kind of find the ceiling. Like for, for Wash, I think, like we didn't, we, we lost maybe $1,000 each on that film, like during like the post-production. But like we went into it with like, I don't know, maybe had like six grand in sponsorship or something. We were like, that's sick, it's gonna pay for everything. And like that money just like goes away like super quickly. <laughs> um, and then like the Mexico stuff, we like raised a little more and then we like broke even. But we started to like, started to figure out what to, what to ask for, how to sell different packages and that kind of stuff. So that kind of like trending towards it, it could be a business in and of itself once we like kind of find the right um, the right kind of like ceiling for that money and get uh, get like really efficient in our editing. Like if we finish a film and then we don't go back to our real lives and try to edit it like nights and weekends. Like if we can finish a film and then work full time on it and stuff, uh, I think it totally has the potential to scale and to just us picking a destination, going and shooting a film, and then like getting paid to edit our own film. Kind of a crazy thing. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of just like guessing and checking and you kind of like, you, you write your budget around like your hard cost and then you kind of build in your day rates and your equipment rates and your editing rates. So when you're actually selling it, you're, you're selling your time that is gonna be involved in making the thing as well. Um, but it's pretty easy to sell this stuff when you're kind of uh, pre-selling photos and things like that. I mean, because like if a, if a brand wants to buy uh, one photo for full rights, like use it on like trade show booths, websites, like whatever. I mean, that's like a thousand bucks. So if you just go to a brand and say like, hey, will you, will you give us five grand and, to sponsor this film and then we'll get your name in the film, your product in the film and give you five full rights photos or something, then that's usually like a pretty easy discussion and like a good deal for anybody at a brand. And then you get like, I don't know, get like five of those brands together or something and then you have yourself a film to go for. Yeah. What was your level of <laughs> Personally, I think of like skiing with OG and my palms start to sweat. Yeah. Like, so, like, yeah. Up and, like, you know, with all this biking, um, I kind of just learned all this stuff I, I, like three years ago when I when I moved here, um, and I saw like my first uh, first house I lived in had like a the Chris Davenport Ski the Fourteeners like coffee table book, and I was like, holy crap! I need to get some skis. I need to learn how to do this. And then by the end of the season, I found like people to chase around, and I was like learning to ski, basically skiing forty five degree coulars. And stuff, and then we would spend like all spring, like every single weekend, just going in the mountains and just like, kind of, cutting my teeth in that sense. And then, pretty quickly switched to all, uh, all backcountry skiing, just all the time. And you get strong pretty quickly if you're always climbing mountains and doing that kind of stuff. Um, and then in the summer, I'd be working on my climbing skills to kind of enhance the skiing skills and that kind of stuff. And then, the biking I just kind of picked up from following. I mean, like Joey's been a pro downhill racer for like 10 years now or something and all these other like really fast guys I ride with. So I kind of just got thrown into it and had to learn to, to keep up. And uh, 
with like skiing with all the, the pros um, for that DinaFit series, it, it wasn't totally the hardest because they're pretty chill. They ski every day, so they're not out just to like run around and like race it. And I'd been getting into like schemo racing and like going fast and stuff. And so I'd, I would like set up a shot, I'd get to re rest for a while and then they'd be going to do something. And I could easily just like fire it up and just like sprint with a camera pack and like for like 10 minutes and like get ahead of them and set up a shot and then rest for a while. And just kind of like run and then rest and then run and then rest. And, I don't know, but it, it was pretty scary. I mean, we like, we took five lifts to get over the back of Whistler. Then all of a sudden, like, just like standing there with Hoji, he's like, all right, we're going way back to that mountain over there. We're gonna loop around this glacier here and go all around there. I'm like, all right, man, let's do this. <laughs> Hope you don't put, on, put me on anything crazy. <laughs> That, what's like a good example of that being successful? Um, yeah, so that, uh, that's something that we just kind of do on our own because um, part of the benefit for them, I think, is just like in trusting us and letting us create the content that reflects our film. So like when we, when we launched Wash and we had the, the social takeovers, um, it's like, for example, well, I think I have some of these campaigns on my, on my website as well. Um, but like for outdoor research, we would try to highlight the, the weather and the environment kind of in the post as we're writing the stuff and kind of like more of a soft sell about the, or making you imagine how this, this clothing could be beneficial when you're in these situations and kind of go back and look at the way the brand tells their stories or um, captions their photos and that kind of stuff and wrote our stuff just to reflect it. So it didn't seem jarring. It was just kind of like, oh, like Thomas and Joey are taking over our account this week, like leading up to the launch of their film follow along in this little teaser of their journey, which is kind of an outdoor research specific journey that ends with the film being online. And then like, then we did the same thing for like New Belgium. And it was like this goofy thing because like they hid beers in their bike bags the whole time and surprised me at the end of the, end of the trip. So we had this whole story about the, this traveling beer and this like goofy story kind of like from the point of view of the beer and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so it, uh, I don't know, brands are, really receptive to if you just like have a package of all this just like here you go here's a week's worth of social content and they're like oh yes thank you because i mean companies really are, most of the photos you see if, if it's not their athletes or whatever giving it to them like they probably pay a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars per instagram photo and that's kind of like the standard thing with brands so if you just like give them all this stuff they're usually pretty psyched um, and then we'll be doing the same thing for this mexico film it's going to launch in the fall um probably through uh through Nacho Adventure, and they're gonna do a big push for us as well. Um, and we're in talks of taking it on Real Rock Tour and some other um, film festival tours and stuff as well. But uh, we're gonna do the kind of same like coordinated social launch thing around then as well. Yeah. Are you guys are you shooting stills and video at the same time? Um, yeah, a mix. If it's like on some of these adventure trips, like I'm usually running like mostly video, and then like Joey might be doing a lot of stills. Um, then a lot of the projects have been hired on lately, it's, I would say, I don't know, 95% video, but a brand might say, like, all right, we, we need a, a four minute edit out of this, and then we need, I don't know, five stills for our catalog or something like that. So that's pretty easy to like, kind of get that stuff as well. But it's never like big campaigns that you're like trying to do both, like, both simultaneously. But you need to have a balance of both to, to be able to market the stuff, to be able to provide value to your sponsors and all that kind of stuff. Anybody else? Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>